la la Fiori's Fiori's on fire. Fiori's on fire. We have no rhythm, man. No rhythm, no time. We have no rhythm. It doesn't matter, guys. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Guys, listening to the Coucho guys, I don't even know what episode it is. I don't care. 148, 148, 149, 149, something like that. Guys, it doesn't matter. One, it is a nine, Adriano. That's what matters, Dave. (laughs) <laughs> guys, the culture guys, tonight, it's going to be a bit of a mess, a bit of a movie, but we're, you know, pleasure to have uh, president of uh, Milan Club Philadelphia once again, David Fante, Scudetto bus driver, uh, conductor, whatever you want to label him as, he's here tonight, guys. Uh, Dave, just what's what's up, man? How How is everything and how are you feeling? Well, first of all, first of all, buonasera, campione. <laughs> It's very nice to see you guys. Oh my god. Oh my god. It feels good, doesn't it? it? Feels so good after so many years. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, things are things are awesome, man. Things are I'm still I'm still riding the wave from this weekend. You know, it's just trying to trying to go about my normal life and routine and it's a little bit difficult because of uh so many distractions and everything, but it's been it's been absolutely amazing. How about you? How you feel? Nah, listen. You know what, if if we would have recorded last night, I don't know if I would have had much of a voice. I mean, uh, or even two nights ago, um, you know, I, I was I was honored to be on the, the Napoli rant there with uh, the two roughs last night. Try my best to 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 speak the best I could <laughs> today. I don't know. It was a bit my voice kind of caught up again to me and it, yeah. it was kind of a bit a bit sour. But uh, honestly, voice, no voice. Dave, I don't care. We're uh, champions of Italy once more for the 19th time. Yes, it feels are. uh it just feels so uh so amazing so i i mean we can we can go back and forth and and you know guys nick is here today so if you don't hear his voice too much it doesn't so matter alive. guys milan's milan <laughs> is champions of italy juventus had their run we have this the, the show tonight but um just you know dave before we get into maybe yeah. your thoughts of the game and just how everything went on one, one, uh, one we'll thing i wanted to, to, add, to add adriano sorry i'm gonna interrupt you sure every time that uh, juventus won in scudetto while we we're doing the podcast i would count down <laughs> oh you know every day that italy is champion uh, uh juventus is champion of italy and i'd give like uh the number of days i said that today's a good day you know what it's two days now that inter is not champion of italy so any day that it's not champion of Italy is a good day. And we'll that's it. one thing we'll Juventus and Milan fans can agree on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it is uh, it is what it is. I don't I don't want to throw shade at our, at our Interisti friends. We have a lot of Interisti friends that we've uh, come so close with. But uh, Dave, you know, I'm part of Milan Cub Montreal yourself. Uh, obviously, Presidente of Milan Cub Philadelphia. Rocking yep. our shirt tonight, I love it. Uh, with yep. your with your your flag in the background, just how was your day Sunday? What did it consist of? How was how was the uh, the celebration? We saw the pictures, but for anybody that doesn't know and living under a damn rock, this Scudetto <laughs> bus became a reality. Dave, please enlighten us all yeah. about uh, the experience in Philadelphia. So we'll get to the Scudetto bus in a minute, but um, the the day like you know was kind of. I had a whole laundry list of things I had to do before actually getting to Grand Cafe L'Aquila and getting to the match and everything. And so I was busy as anything, just like packing things up, making sure that, you know, everything's checked off the list, that we have everything prepared. Because, you know, it took a while to to get all the preparations in line and everything, make sure we were ready to go over there and, and you know, just have the best time we possibly could. So Sunday morning, I'm just all over the place, you know, running up and down the stairs in the house, just kind of trying to pull stuff together. And I had... I had so much to do that I couldn't even concentrate on like where we're going to be in an hour or two, you know, to, to watch the match and get everything set up. So by the time we show up at Grand Cafe L'Aquila there, you know, we're the first ones there, we're setting some things up and I had like an hour and a half to kill and I'm, I'm standing there and I start bouncing around, bouncing around. It's like all this nervous energy. I was not nervous at all leading up to it until I got there and I had nothing to do but wait. And that's when it started to hit me. So luckily people started filtering in, you know, a couple conversations here and there. We had a great crowd, uh, about 50 people, which uh, which for us is, is a really good Beautiful. turnout in Philadelphia. You know, it doesn't have the community that you guys have in Montreal or, you know, New York or Toronto even. But uh, for us, you know, about 50 is a, a great turnout. And, uh, you know, lots of uh, lots of familiar faces that we've known for years, lots of new faces that came to join us for the first time. And it was, it was wonderful to, to meet all of them. And, uh, you know, I think, I think everybody just had a blast. Everybody had a great time. Everybody got along. We didn't have any issues. You know, everything kind of went really well. Couldn't have asked for anything better. 
And it was, it was a hell of a first half too. You know, the second half maybe was a little more cautious, but that first half, man, Milan came out to play. They came out to play. They knew what it meant. And, you know, after all the talk the entire week about what a threat Sassuolo was going to be, I was frankly surprised that Milan came out like guns a blazing, you know, and it was, uh, it was great to see because that convinced me. It's like, you know, their, their, their goalie might be having the game of his life and not letting a damn thing in, but at a certain point, something's going to give, there's going to be a crack in the wall. And sure enough, there was. And so like, I don't think the match could have gone any better. And then afterwards, like, man, he's just, you know, singing and cheering and everybody kind of getting together to everybody. Like if it were up to me, I would have started like, you know, celebrating at halftime, but you know, everybody, <laughs> no, you gotta be cautious. You gotta be cautious. We don't mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. We don't, we don't mention any of any of those things like the I word or anything like that, you know? And uh, <laughs> it was just, it was just amazing. So I think by the time for me, I was celebrating like officially when Sassuolo changed the goalie out. Like when they changed the goalie out, the co- like at that point, the coach has no hope of any comeback whatsoever, in my opinion. So, you know, give his guys some time to, to get out there and have a run. Um, and that was it, man. That was from that moment on for me, everybody else, I think around the 85th minute got more comfortable and, and with it. And then by the time the final whistle came, it was just, you know, we were so excited. We were dancing, everything, you know, the, bartender spraying champagne on us and everything it felt like uh it felt pretty incredible really really incredible wow man and this you know what like this and this is what it's all about right i mean i i was gracious enough to be with my milan brothers and sisters here in montreal with milan club montreal uh at the uh, chicharros uh, here in the east end of montreal um what a turnout i mean if for us you yeah. know uh the turnouts every week aren't always the the most consistent you know we get people we don't but for us it doesn't matter there's still you know vinny is always a uh, you know the best sport about that he's always pretty much there so um but you know what i think we cracked i i, I at the end of it i don't even remember who i didn't even know who was a member anymore who wasn't a member right. everybody was in red and black doesn't so matter. for me it didn't yeah. matter we are at least over 100 plus um so and you know You've been to Chicharro, so in the back, yep. you've seen it's not the biggest, but you no. know we were able to all pack it in, in the back. So it was a uh, it was a special feeling, Dave. I got to say, and um, again, it was a bit nervous. I wasn't nervous either. I was I've been optimistic with my with this Milan. I've been mm-hmm. I've been really po- trying to yep. be positive. Um, I really, uh, you know, and I've been a big advocate of taking care of our own business uh, down the stretch in the business end of the right. season. Exactly because yep. I knew, and I mean. Again, if you fought, felt this way or not, I don't know, but um, you know, you knew Inter was going to show up, and you knew Inter was going to perform right. at their at their highest, and they, you knew they were going to go pick up those points. Um, you know, obviously the Bologna game went the way it went for them down the stretch, but you knew these last two three games they were picking up the points. It was really in Milan's hands, so yeah. I was optimistic. I was positive. Um, the only scare was. Man, Consili was starting to have a bit of the game of his life against us, he which actually was. Again, I was looking into my my fellow members, and we couldn't believe it. It's like, man, like four shots. It could have been four goals, but you know, he really stood on his head. But um, once that uh, that barrier broke, like you said, Dave, I think it was just uh, just the joy after each goal, like one after yeah. the other, like partying, yeah. like like we. It was a mess. It was really yeah. crazy. But at the same time, it's it's those moments that you. We haven't been able to to feel in in uh, in eleven long years, Dave. Yeah. Just talk yeah. about maybe a bit about that, if you will, um, before we get into questions and other topics we have for you. Um, what did it mean? Um, like, what did this scudetto mean for you? Uh, you know, after this this long wait yeah. and getting number nineteen down to the final match day, being out our our, our rival Inter. What did this all mean to you uh, after all this time? Well, it was uh, it was a long time coming. I mean. For us, we started our club in August of 2012, right? So from that point through the banter era, you know, up until wow. yeah. up until today, <laughs> uh, you know, it was it was a it was a it was a rough ride. It was an absolute rough ride. Um, and so, like having seen them at their absolute worst, but still getting a crowd out, you know, whenever we got together, you know, sometimes it obviously was better than other times. Uh, there were lots of times that I'd be posting, you know, pictures of uh, of our group on social media afterwards and saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, it wasn't the result we wanted, but we're glad everybody came out and had a good time, that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah. you know, we we did a lot of that. We did a lot of that. But, you know, the whole point was kind of getting together and, and being social and, you know, having having this sort of common bond with uh, with other Milanisti in the area and other people visiting from from wherever they are. 
And so I think to finally get to a point where they're starting to build, they're starting to build, they're starting to get better, right? And all, I mean, for me, it really, it really started, you know, during COVID, you know, they had a great run during COVID and everything. I, I remember a lot of people saying how, you know, you got a young team and they're probably playing better because they don't have the crowd to deal with or something like that. Maybe it's not as much anxiety or whatever. So if that's true or not, you know, who can say for sure? Cause you'll never know, but you know, maybe it did have something to do with it, but I think they were able to kind of slowly get better and slowly bring in the reinforcements and everything. And then finally being able to celebrate, you know, second place last year. Uh, and before that, missing the champions league by one point, you know what I mean? It's like, we, we, we were on the cusp of something bigger. And so this at least is, you know, heading in the right direction on the forward trajectory and everything. And I think, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's promising for what happens in the future. You know, I, I have no idea what's going to happen with an ownership change. I have no idea what's going to happen, you know, once, uh, if there's an influx of money, if they build their own stadium, stuff like that. Um, I really hope that, that people like Maldini, people like Masada, Gazidis even, you know what I mean? It's like, these are the people that have kind of turned the ship around. And I hope they stay yeah. on to, to kind of see it through and keep it going, because I think, you know, it's, it's going to keep going up, hopefully for a little while. And, you know, we want to enjoy it as much as we can. Absolutely. Nick, I'll let you uh, I'll let you take the bit of the floor. I don't want to take all the uh, all the spotlight here. Any question you have for Dave, feel free. I, I, I do want to ask about the game, uh, the game itself, because I mean, Adrian, I know you, you kind of brought it up quickly. Couldn't see Lee. It looked yeah. like he was going to have one of those games. And I, I was yeah. watching the game, too. Um, you know, watching on the zone, uh, zone on goal. Uh, you know, they flipped between the two games inter Milan, but they were mainly focused on the Milan game. So I watched most of that, most of the start. And I love drama, right? You know, neither, neither my team is involved. I just wanted to see drama. I wanted to see a Scudetto winning late goal or something, you know? Uh, and it seemed... From the start, Milan was hungry. You saw you saw that right away. It was pretty much a home game, um, and they they came out strong. But then uh, Consili had those had those saves, and you, you have to wonder, you know, is it going to get in Milan's head? This is a young team, uh, but but they do have that that veteran leadership at the same time, and especially Giroud, he is he is that veteran. He does have those trophies. He's, he's a World Cup winner. I mean, he he pretty much took the. Well, not only him, right? Leal too. Uh, they just decide, okay, enough is enough. Concili's not stealing the stealing the show. We're just going to go out three, score three goals in the first half, and 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 that's it. But uh, I mean, what what did you make of the game? Well, I think it was just that. I mean, that first half was electric, you know, and and the first the first couple chances on goal uh, were were pretty amazing. And, you know, you don't always see that from Milan. Like sometimes they'll start strong, but they'll take their foot off the gas or something like that. But they just kept, they kept hammering and hammering and hammering. And, uh, you know, the whole time I'm thinking to myself, like, as long as it's a zero, zero draw, you know, like we get the <laughs> point we win. But the thing is, I didn't, I didn't want that. I wanted the win. I wanted the yeah. win so that there was no, there was no question, no winning a Scudetto on the technicality of, you know, head to head, uh, result, you know what I mean. I, I wanted that win. I wanted the extra points, and I just wanted to be ahead so that there was no drama whatsoever. Um, but I think, you know, I was I was kind of preparing myself for a draw, maybe preparing myself for a one nothing uh, win. Um, but you know, I, I think they they just kind of they got it done towards the end of the first half. You know, they they just they exploded, and the second half I think was a lot more reserved. You could tell that they were they wanted to hold on to the lead. Uh, they were being cautious, but what I loved, like everybody, everybody got into it. You know, everybody played their part. Everybody understood what they had to do. Everybody knew it was on the line. Everybody knew what it meant. And uh, for me, it was just seeing that sort of the, just how they played as a team, how they played as a unit, how they played for each other, how they communicated with each other. I mean, that that's beautiful stuff. You know, that that's the stuff of like the national team that that I used to love so much. You know, lately it's it's been a little different for me with the. <laughs> with the national team, but it's, it's yeah. like, you get, you get these people that just kind of, you know, they play for each other and it's exciting. Like when you have a group like that, that's, that's awesome, man. That's the stuff of like dynasties. You know, I want I want to see them come back again next year and the year after that, you know, I want a Juventus dynasty plus two more <laughs> years on top of it. So. <laughs> no, it's we'll Dave. I think, 
Yeah, no, you you summed it up perfectly. I mean, the the first half, and, and just to see that hunger from minute one, Dave. I think it was, like you said, something that we don't usually see uh, from Milan. You know, uh, if anybody listens to Milan Weekly Pod or uh, even us to a certain extent, I, I've said it here as well. Um, the final third has been a, an, an issue for us in many occasions. Uh, not only if it's been this season and seasons past, making that final pass, making that final play. Uh, you know, in the final third has really been uh, an issue. And, you know, our offense, if you want to say, maybe out of every position group might be the weakest on, on, on you know, com in comparison to our midfield, our defense, and the man between the sticks in Mike Magnon. So um, to see three goals in less than 45, less than 45 minutes, because I think, you know, I think it was like about 35 minutes they scored three goals. Um it just says a lot. And and you know what? I, I'm glad that they were able to come together. I'm glad that they were able to understand what was at hand. And again, you said it, Dave, young team. But I think um, with the leadership that they've been under, you know, people are going to put it on Ibra. That's fine. We can put it on Ibra. We can put it on Giroud. For me, Pioli as well. My background tonight is part of the Pioli um, for my background tonight. But He's been uh, he's been a really uh, you know big part of it uh, big part of it too for 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 me. So, um, what do you? Uh, well, I don't even know what my point was. I'm I'm all over the place tonight, Dave. But um, That's all right, man. That's what do you right. what do you make what do you make of? I guess we'll go. I guess we'll go. You know, in terms of uh, players, um, is there anything that Leal can't do? <laughs> and um, how how big <laughs> has has Mike Magnon been uh, not only this game but this season for you? Well, we'll start with Leao. I think Leao was one of those players who for a very long time showed a lot of potential and he would like score one and he'd go cold for a while and he'd score another yeah. and go cold for a while. And so for me, he was always somebody that I thought always had the potential, but I never, I kind of dismissed him because he wasn't consistent enough. And then something clicked, something clicked uh, and he just, he just lit it up and it's been, it's been phenomenal ever since then. And, you know, I'm not, Look, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there right now. I'm not the kind of supporter who's gonna remember stats or who's gonna remember oh he did this in this game versus that in the other game. For me, it's more about sure. just kind of having the feeling and seeing how it goes, you know, throughout throughout the the season and the long run there. Um, but there was a time that I I thought you know Leao should have been benched for a while and he was, you know, and yeah. he came back on and you could just see like he started feeling more comfortable and the goals started coming and he's. He's playing and he's got always got a big smile on his face. You know what I mean? And it's like he just he tears it up. He runs past these guys like nobody's business. And and to me that's that's fun. That's exciting. You know, and that, that's the kind of player you want uh, on your team. You want the you want the attack to be to be as exciting as that. Uh, in terms of Magnan, Magnan has just been phenomenal. I mean, there, there's there aren't enough superlatives that you can lay on this guy. He's just been that good. And the fact that you know. We were as Milan East. I'm gonna I'm gonna generalize here, but I think I could say pretty much all of us were pretty upset when Donnarumma made the decision to leave. And you know who the hell can fill that void? Uh, just because he's been amazing for us. And you know Magnan just kind of convinced us early on. It, it didn't take long for him to show what he was made of. You know, and it was just it's been phenomenal. So he's another one that you know I hope stays with us for a long time because I think I think he's uh, I think he's happy at Milan. I'm certainly happy yeah. that he's here, and uh, you know I'd love to keep him around. 